And today I'll be presenting about sentence patterns. So I want to say welcome and hopefully you can have a good session. Right, sentence patterns. Why do we need to know what are sentence patterns? Okay, as we know, there is paper two for UPSR English and we have two uh, major writing uh, assessments in the paper itself which is section B2 and section C. So you need to write. And one of the criteria where the markers look at when they assess your essay is uh, on your sentence patterns and your sentence structure. Where uh, different sentence patterns and different sentence structure will give you the edge over your friends to obtain that extra marks. Okay, so we are going to look at two uh, components today, which are sentence patterns and sentence uh, structure. Hopefully, we will have enough time to finish uh, all this today. Okay, first of all, we're going to look at sentence patterns. But before we look at sentence patterns, you should know what are subjects. Okay, what sentence are we going to look at? What component is the sentence or verb? Sorry, subject or verb. So subject na another. Subject na are nouns. Nouns such as what you can see here, like Ahmad, the cats, Devi and Sheila, the king of Monaco, Mars, Mars as in the planet. Okay, so these are all nouns that we have learned. Uh, singular noun arkla, illa plural noun arkla, proper noun arkla, but as long as they are nouns. And then we also have pronouns. Pronouns is, we have learned this since standard three. Okay, so we have I, he, she, it, you, we, they. These are pronouns, kata ganti diri. And then we also have pronouns like those, demonstrative pronouns, like this, that, these, those. Okay, so I don't want to um, go thoroughly in all this simple so I'm just telling you what are subjects so we have nouns and pronouns you have to know this okay next verbs for sentence subject or verbs so verbs na for year six for until year six I would say this is what I teach my students and I hope that they have mastered this. I think if you have mastered these uh, verbs, you should be ready to sit for any UPSR level exams. Because um, let's face it, when it comes to writing uh, essays in section C, the most uh, probable uh, tense that you'll be using is past tense and past continuous, uh, and maybe some present tense. So I think. If you can master these verbs, you should be okay. All right. So verb to be present, we have I. I kundi we have am, have, and do. Singular is is, has, does. Plural are, have, do. For past, I was, had, did. Singular also was, had, did. Just plural a bit of a change. We use were, had, did. Okay, 
ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் சென்டென்சஸ் இப்போ வந்து நான் இப்போ இது வர்க் டு பீனா ஐ ஆம் டென் இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் ஐ ஆம் டென் இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் ஸோ அந்த ஐ வந்து சப்ஜெக்ட் ஆம் இஸ் யோர் வர்க் சம் கிட்ஸ் தே கெட் கன்ஃபியூஸ்ட் நீங்க சொல்லுவீங்க அதுல வந்து பிரபுவார்த்தன் எதுவுமே இல்லையே அப்படின்னு ஏன்னா மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த டைம் வென் பீப்புள் வாண்ட் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் த வர்க் என்ன அது வர்க்னு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணும் போது நம்ம என்ன சொல்லி சொல்லுவோம் ஓ வர்க்னா வந்து கத்துக்கிறது வர்க்னா வந்து எக்ஷன் ஒர்க் நம்ம செய்யறோம்ல அதான் ஒர்க் அப்படின்னு ஸோ அது வந்து நம்ம ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் மைண்ட்ல போய் செட் ஆயிரும் ஓ ஓகே பிரபுவார்த்தன் ஏதாச்சும் ஒரு வேலை மாதிரி செஞ்சா அதான் ஒர்க் அப்படின்னு ஒரு ஒரு ஃப்ரீக்வன்சிவ் நோஷன் செட் பண்ணிடும் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் மைண்ட் இதுல மைண்ட்ல ஸோ வென் வி சே ஐ ஆம் டென் இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் இந்த சென்டென்ஸ்ல வந்து நீ வர்ப் கண்டுபிடினோடனே தேர் பில இதுல எங்க இருக்கு வர்ப் அப்படின்னு யோசிப்பாங்க ஸோ யூ ஹேவ் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் த வேர்ட் ஆம் ஹியர் எக்ஸ் எஸ் அர்க் வி கால் இட் ஒர்க் டு பி ஸோ வி ஹேவ் ஹியர் ஆம் ஹேவ் டூ ஹேஸ் டஸ் ஹேட் டி இதுல வந்து பாஸ்ட் டென்ஸ்க்கு and then we also have action verb this is what we know normally la like uh, verbs that show action adavud perbuatan la katukirja essentially action verb likes eats sees uh, for plural like like eat see in the singular na eppadi na he likes she eats it sees and then for plural he uh, sorry they like we eat uh they see and so on and so forth present continuous uh this one can be past continuous also eating sleeping watching eight past tense eight slept saw watched played open so these are all verbs verbs can be verb to be mattum verbs a irukalam illa action verb mattum verb a irukalam illa verb to be plus action verb kuda verb aagalam for example uh like the example i should i said just now i am 10 years old so i am am running over work uh i am going to school so work to be am present con- uh, continuous in i am going to school am going is also a work i went to school past tense went so that is also a work So, work now and then, area with her, don't be confused. Don't think that, oh, action now and come to other matter than work. Work to be on work now, action work or work. Work now. Okay? All right. So, now that we have gone through uh, subject and work. So, now you look at this uh, diagram here. The main components of a sentence is subject and work. Subject and work in the other full sentence. But not always sometimes there are also sentences that only have work for example run stop leave these are what we call imperative sentences these are the imperative sentences now is when we ask someone to do something for example maybe you see a dog and then so the dog is trying to attack you so you tell your friends to run run so that is a complete sentence subject avala but there is verb so verb is important run stop leave idala und imperative imperative na und we ask someone to do something but uh for upsc level you should know we have subject and verb and this will make up your sentence why should we know this ya number one it therinjukona na once we know என்னென்ன கம்போனன்ஸ் என்னென்ன மெயின் கம்போனன்ஸ் இருக்கோ அந்த கம்போனன்ஸ் வச்சு வி கேன் எக்ஸ்பேண்ட் அவர் சென்டென்சஸ் விச் ஐ ஷோ லெட்டர் ஆன் யூ கேன் சி இப்போ இந்த சென்டென்ஸ் வந்து எப்படி தெரியுமா நம்ம மேகி சாப்பிட்டா எப்படி இருக்கும் மேகி வந்து கோசமான மேகி வந்து ஜஸ்ட் மேகி அந்த பிரிஞ்சா கரெக்ட் ஓகே இட்ஸ் அந்த மாதிரி நம்ம கோசமா கூட சாப்பிடலாம் ஜஸ்ட் ஹிட் த வாட்டர் புட் த மேகி புட் த பிரிஞ்சா மசா ஃபார் டூ மினிட்ஸ் அண்ட் தென் கேன் ஈட் இட் பட் is it nice when you eat it like that no so of course if like me i would put uh, onions garlic and then egg and then if got hot dog then i'll fry the hot dog and put it inside to make it more tastier uh, you can put vegetables you can put a uh, fish cake right so that is what 
sentence pattern. Once you know the components in a sentence, you can make it tastier, you know, so to say. And the essay on the cosmarka, so when you add on, it become much more nicer to read, and the marker would feel oh okay, happier to read your sentences, your essay, and they will give you more marks. Okay. So sentence sentence number one subject plus verb. This is the most basic. Now paling basic ana wore uh pattern except for verb la as an imperative but this is the most basic you should be able to write this john is sleeping amira is eating ali ran the children play those teachers were talking people were celebrating so john here is your subject as you can see here indicated by the yellow font john is sleeping verb is sleeping is sleeping is a verb amira is eating ali ran the children play those teachers were talking people were celebrating so these are all sentences with only two components which are subject and verb the pattern now is the present continuous. This is also present continuous. This is past tense, past tense, past continuous, past continuous. As I said just now, we have here work to be, and then we have here sleeping. This is also work to be is plus sleeping, eating, and then it only just work action work matter now. Ali ran. The children play. Action verb matter. Those teachers were talking. Were when the verb to be talking when the action verb. So we combine these both together to form a verb. People were celebrating. Action verb. Verb to be. Okay. It can be written in any form as long as these make up the verbs. Okay. Wow. Clear. Right, so let's move on. SVO, subject, verb, object. Okay, subject, verb, object now. Subject, siapa, verb, membuat apa, object, kepada apa atau siapa. So, what it means is, in the subject, when they in, uh, what are they doing to this object? Okay. So here we say they play a game. They subject play a game. Object. What did they play? A game. Okay. He kicked the ball. He kicked the ball. He kicked the ball. Salina made the doll. Salina made the doll. Salina do what? Made. Made what? The dog. They are walking the dog. They are walking the dog. Subject, verb, object. It is eating a fish. It is eating a fish. I like durians. I like durians. So we have here subject, verb, object. Not all sentences will have an object. Okay, and that is okay. Seller work when you need an object. For example, they played a game. If in the water a game in a full sentence and it makes sense. They played. Full stop which up. It's a full sentence and it makes sense. But some sentences you need an object. For example, he kicked. He kicked. He kicked what? He kicked. Adwanda or sub or verb that needs an object. So he kicked the ball. So you must always ask yourself when you have written the subject, when you have written the verb, and the verb pinala vandu kandipa vandu sala kandipa varnama varta varnama or object varnama iliyan. 
So they play when the number so long. Okay, they play Tavala, object Tavala. Amana, he kicked the ball, you need an object. So please pay attention to this when you write. Same as here, it is eating. It is eating, you can just leave it like that. A fish when the number add panna Tavala. It is eating number. So now, okay, put your oh, I'll stop it. Anna, I like. I like up in Ingodum Gede. I like up in Sultan Ingodum Gede. Kandipa on this. You like, okay, you like what? You need to write. I like what? So this is what we call intransitive and transitive verb. In the conjure technical on a term, Anna, I think in BM you have learned this. Uh, no object means it's intransitive verb. Okay, so if you don't have in, uh, objects, like it is eating. So in the eating when we say intransitive verb. And uh, this is a bit technical, so you don't have to actually know the term, but just uh, remember that some verbs do not need an object that we saw here. Okay, so like for example here, Amira is eating. We just say Amira is eating and we understand, oh Amira is eating. We don't need to class an object. Okay, next. SVA. SVA na subject, verb, adverbial. Adverbial wonder is just information. You are adding information to the sentence. You see over here, I wrote here, add information as in where, when, why, and how. So we will categorize it into three uh, categories, which are adverbial of time. Adverbial of place and adverbial of manner. Time now, time, of course, you need that on time now, never near. When place is where, manner now, how. How now, yep, pretty. Yep, pretty, in the mari, with the color, you know. So I have examples here. So you can They play on the beach. Madula sentence. So number in photo, they played the game in photo. Are they They played on the beach. So we say they played on the beach. In the number object pole. It's okay. Because we are answering the question where. You see, they played where? On the beach. She slept in the room. Answering the question where. He ate in the evening. Answering the question then. My friends and I ran yesterday. Answering the question, when? My mother walked slowly. So slowly is a adverb. So we are answering the question, how? Alina looked quickly. How? Quickly. She looked at the person quickly. She looked quickly. So these are what we call SVA. So th now you can see SVO or SVA. And then now we can combine them. SVOA. So this is what we I'm talking about mother and the example and the Maggie example. Okay. So this is your Maggie. Your course of Maggie, okay? So you don't me, you don't John is sleeping. So, me, Parancha. You still can write sentences like this. It is not wrong. But is it nice to read? Mm, okay, la. As, as long as it's correct, right? But we just want to add some Parancha here. So now we add some uh, garlic, some onion, maybe some chili padi or something like that. So we add a bit. And then, this is also still your garlic, your chili padi, your onion, so you add a bit. And then now, you add your egg or your hot dog or your fish cake. So now, you have a nice full sentence that has four components. For example, you see here. The children played a beach. Uh, sorry, uh, the children played a game on the beach. So, number Marie, when the, the children played, up in her sentence, in the club, but we added a object. The children played a game. And then you're like, oh, so where they played the game? On the beach. 
So now your sentence is like becoming more. This is how we expand our sentence. He ate bread in the evening. He ate. Full stop. But we add the object. He ate bread. When? In the evening. So we have expanded the sentence. Just for two words, Linda, we have expanded it to one, two, three, four, five, six words. Alina saw the boy. So we could have ended either in the intransitive, so we needed the the sorry transitive verb, so we needed the uh the object. So Alina saw the boy. Where? In the park. Shiva is writing a letter. We could have ended this with Shiva is writing. Full stop. But we just added Shiva is writing a letter. Where? On the table. My mother is cooking. Full stop. We could have ended this. But we add our chili padi and whatnot. We say, my mother is cooking the chicken. Where? In the kitchen. So this is how we expand the sentence. Okay. They took pictures. Where? In the old factory. So you should ask yourself questions such as where and when so that you can add details to your sentences to make it much more interesting. I'm not saying it is wrong if you just write sentences that only have subject and verb and object but when you have adverbials of time place or manner it makes your sentences that more interesting that much interesting when it's interesting people are more inclined the markers are more inclined inclined they want to give you marks and at the end of the day this is what is we are striving for to get more marks and you should write different sentence patterns throughout your essay. One thing that I learned from my friends who happen to be paper two markers, they say when they read the essay and the essay of Pantu Mode, they will see, um, they will look for variation of sentences. Sentence patterns are different. I mean, not everything is SV, you know. Some they have SVO or SVOA, SVA. When they see uh, different sentence patterns throughout the essay, they will come to this conclusion that you are an efficient language user, that you are good in English. So be aware when you write. When you write, be aware of the sentence patterns that you're using. What are you saying? Can you add information? So if you can add information, add the information. Okay? But do not exceed the word count. So you must be a bit smart about how and where you add the information. Okay. So now, we can expand the sentences next. If na worry or the sentence it, then na expand pandra in barna. For example, he runs. Okay. So now we want to add an adverbial of place. He runs around the park. He runs around the park. Okay. So we add one. We can also say uh, adverbial of time. He runs every morning. Okay. Also, we can also add an adverbial of manner. He runs slowly. Okay. Now we want to add two adverbials. Adverbials of time and adverbial of place. He runs around the park every morning. Or we can add adverbial of manner and adverbial of place. He runs slowly around the park. Or, he runs slowly every morning. I can also add all three to make a sentence. Every morning, he runs slowly around the park. You can also write this as, 
he runs slowly around the park every morning. So every morning, when the minnuko vanna, pinaliu vanna. This is what we say variation. From he runs, we have expanded the sentences. Sorry, we have expanded the sentence. To something that has more than a subject and a verb, we have added the adverbial of place, adverbial adverbial of manner, and adverbial of time. And this is what I mean by making your Maggie taste better. So this is your kosa Maggie, and this is your Maggie with onion, with chili padi, with garlic, and then with egg, and then with hot dog, and it's like so delicious. So every morning he runs slowly around the park. This is what we mean by adding information. Either you know lah, tapil lah. But if you write this, it is much more interesting to read. Okay. So this is how we expand the sentence to make it more interesting. Okay. So exercise time. Try this. I will give you three minutes. Uh, identify the subjects and the verbs of these sentences. So, either subject, either verb. I will give you, um, I think, five minutes would be enough. So, take your time and try to identify the subjects and the verbs of these sentences. Okay, so I hope you took the time to uh, go through the sentences. So try this, I say. Ahmad is talking in the class. I just want you to identify the verbs and the subjects. So as for the adverbial, you just, you will do later. You just identify the subject and the verb. Everyone listened carefully. Oh, sorry, the full stop is missing. Melissa was walking happily to the park. Salina and Amira are going to Japan. She is cleaning her room now. They were eating in the kitchen. So, did you get that? Ahmad is talking in the class. So, Ahmad is the subject. Is talking is your verb. Did you get that? I hope you did. 
If you did, congratulations. Everyone listened carefully. So everyone is your subject. Listened is your work, which is in past tense. And did you get that? If you did, good. Melissa was walking happily to the park. Melissa here is your subject. Was walking is your work. Salina and Amira are going to Japan. Salina and Amira are going to Japan. Salina and Amira are your subjects. Are going is your work. She is cleaning her room now. She is your subject. Is cleaning is your work. And last but not least, they were eating in the kitchen. They is your subject. Were eating is your work. So did you get all this? If you did, good job. Right, so let's move on. Now, try this. Same sentences. Try to identify the adverbs and identify what kind of adverbs they are. Uh, for example, if they are talking about the place or time or manner. So I'll give you... Three minutes should be enough for you to do this. Uh, I'll be quiet. So just try to tackle this exercise and see if you can get the correct answers. Okay, uh, two minutes, but I can, we can carry on. So let's look at the sentences now. So I told you to identify the adverbs. Ahmad is talking in the class. Everyone listen carefully. So let's move on to the answer. So did you get this? Ahmad is talking in the class. So obviously, this is answering the question where? Adverbial of place. Everyone listened carefully. So carefully is a adverb of manner. How they listened? Carefully. Melissa was walking happily to the park. So here we have two adverbs. Melissa was walking happily where? To the park. So both of these are adverbs. Salina and Amira are going to Japan. Where are they going? To Japan. So this is an adverbial of place. She is cleaning her room now. Now indicates time. So it is the adverbial of time. They were eating in the kitchen. Where? In the kitchen. So some extra point. Can you identify the object? There's one object in these sentences. One sentence has an object. Did you guess which one? 
can you just go through the sentence again and then try to see which sentence has an object? There is one sentence. Okay. So if you guess sentence number five, she is cleaning her room. Her room is the object. Yes, correct. You are right. She is cleaning her room. Is cleaning is the verb. What is she doing? Her room is the object. She's cleaning her room. Okay. So when you do something to to something that becomes the object. So she is cleaning her room. Her room is the object. Okay. So let's move on. Now this is a bit harder. So identify all the components in the sentences. And when I say all the components, I'm talking about subject, verb, object, and adverbs. Uh, adverbials or place, time, or manner. So this one you have to do all. Subject, verb, object, if they are objects, and adverbial of time, place, or manner. So I'm going to give you some time. Take your time and go through the sentences and then check and see if you get them all right. All correct? All right. Okay, let's go through the sentences. I will read the sentences for you. Okay, number one. Elsa is singing in Arendelle. All right, Elsa is singing in Arendelle. The children are playing a game on the beach. The monkeys were chattering loudly in the trees. Yesterday, my sister bought a scarf in Penang. Those boys crept into the room quietly. The doctors examined the patient in the room the day before yesterday. So I asked you to identify all the components, which are the subjects, the words, the objects, and the adverbials. So let's see if you get them correct, if you got them. All right. So how did you do? Did you get all the answers correct? I hope you did. And if you did, yay, congratulations. Well done. So let's just go through the answers. Elsa is singing in Arendelle. Elsa, subject, is singing, is your verb. In Arendelle, is your adverbial of place. The children are playing a game on the beach. The children, is your subject, are playing, is your verb. A game is an object. And on the beach is your adverbial of place. The monkeys. Ah, 
I have done some error here. I am so sorry. I apologize. The monkeys. Okay. This is your subject. There's a problem with the color assignment. I am so sorry. Word chattering is your work. Loudly in the trees is your adverbial. But I need to remind you, I mean, uh, tell you, there are two adverbs here. Loudly is your adverbial of manner. In the trees is your adverbial of place. So there are two adverbs here. Right? The monkeys is your subject. Word chattering is your verb. Loudly is your adverb of manner. And in the trees is your adverb of place. Yesterday, my sister bought a scarf in Penang. So, as I mentioned earlier, the adverbial of time can appear at the beginning of the sentences. So, it's okay. And yesterday, adverbial of time, my sister is your subject. Bought is a verb. A scarf is your noun. In Penang is your adverbial of place. Those boys crept into the room quietly. Those boys, those boys are your subject. Crept is your verb. Crept means it's like you slowly go in, okay, without making any noise, okay? Crept. Uh, this is the past tense. The present tense or the base form is creep. C R E E T. Into the room quietly. And this has two adverbs. Into the room is your adverbial of place and quietly is your adverbial of manner. You can also write this sentence as the, those boys crept quietly into the room. It is also acceptable. Right, next. The doctors examined the patient in the room the day before yesterday. So this has the doctor's subject. Examined is your verb. The patient is your object. In the room is your adverbial of place, correct? And last but not least, the day before yesterday is your adverbial of time. So, I hope you did well in this. And if you did well, congratulations. So, this is how we write sentences with different components. To make it much more interesting. Okay, since we have gone through sentence patterns, I will be talking about types of sentences. Uh, what is the difference between types of sentences and sentence patterns? Sentence patterns, I'm talking about the components of the sentence. Because we have here subject, verb, object, and adverbial. When it comes to sentence patterns, Types of sentences. There are three types of sentences. Okay, so we have uh, simple sentences, compound sentences, and complex sentences. Okay, so I'll be going through these type of sentences. I'll be thoroughly speaking about the uh, simple sentences and the compound sentences. As for the complex sentences, I think I need a different day to explain. But let's see what we can do right now. All right. Simple sentences. Or simple sentence. Lah. Simple sentence is very easy. It has one or more subjects and one verb. Just one verb. For example, we have here, Ahmad runs. Ahmad runs. Subject, verb. You have one subject, one verb. Do you need an adverbial of place or time of manner? No. It is a complete sentence. But can you add an adverbial? Yes. And it's still a simple sentence. Siti and Amina run in the park. This is also a simple sentence. Sometimes our students, sometimes also me, we think when we write a long sentence, it's like a complex sentence. It's like, wow, so long. Oh, sure, complex. No. If your sentence has only one subject and one verb, then it is a simple sentence. So over here, you see, Ideal and his family, one subject. Ideal and his family, one subject, are going. Verb. To Cameron Highlands next week. So 
so two is an uh, sorry camera highlands is adverbial of place next week is adverbial of time still a simple sentence very easy yes so how would we use simple sentences let's say for an example if you are writing an essay an essay about a student who is studying in sk sis or jana for example so you would start the sentence with say let's say um Krishantika is a student in SK Sri Saujana. So Krishantika is a, sorry, is the subject. Is, is your verb. A student, object. Kola Sri Saujana, sorry, a student is a compliment. Kola Sri, SK Sri Saujana is your adverbial of place. Still a simple sentence, a complete sentence. Okay. So now let's move on to the second type, compound sentences. Compound sentences is when two or more independent clauses joined by a conjunction. Okay, don't be scared when you see the word clause and you know, even a center clause or in a clause in Korean. Like, clause now is just two independent now and the Tanya Nikhil sentences. What I mean is, okay, let's, like, let's look at it. Don't be confused, don't be scared by the uh definition that is written up there it is just two sentences that can stand on its own and then you bring in a conjunction kata pumubo and you put it and make it into one sentence that's all so for example huh? shiva went to the zoo last weekend for a sentence can it stand on its own yes do we need to add anything on a thing we don't need to add anything shiva went to the zoo last weekend Ragu stayed home last weekend. So Shiva went to the zoo last weekend. Ragu stayed home last weekend. Ning in the render sentence, so you the long. In the prachini, you in that. It just uh, shows that you are not a competent user of the language because it has the same idea. Last weekend, what they did do, but two different verbs, right? So how can we bring it together and make it into one sentence? We bring up conjunction so we have for example over here we see here the conjunction subject shiva went to the zoo but ragu stayed home last weekend subject when the subject in the shiva kanga we also have ragu then we have verb went in state wh1 to the zoo wh2 home conjunction but yeah, in the WH one, I wrote in our photo. Now, yeah, in the end, we say Margla last weekend, last weekend. So we don't write two times. We don't need to say Shiva went to the zoo last weekend, Baragu stayed home last weekend. We don't need to write that. So what we did, the adverbial of place, which is the same, we bring it to the back. But another adverbial of place, we kept them. So we wrote the sentence: Shiva went to the zoo, but Baragu stayed home last weekend. Easy. So if you can write sentences like this, it will help you to get more marks. You can write simple sentences. You can write your whole essay from top to bottom in simple sentences. You will get marks, but you will not get marks for competency. Okay, so those marks matter. So I would say make sure you write a simple sentence in a compound sentence. And also a complex sentence, which we will discuss later on. Okay? So, let's practice. How? Oh, before we practice, look at here. Look here. Coordinating conjunctions. So, these are the coordinating conjunctions that we will learn from year 4 to year 6. Uh, so, for, and, nor, but, or, yet. So, very easy. You can remember this acronym Fanboys. F A N B O Y S. Fanboys. For and no. But or yet. So. Okay? Fanboys. And if you need to write in your uh, essay, make sure you use this. Um, Okay, now let's look at the exercise. 
okay so idu moona sentences namba seiyalam so you try to use the word so for the first box and for the second box and or for the third box try this i'm going to give you some time uh, try to write the sentences on a piece of paper and then later on you see if you get them right Okay, so I hope you got the answers. Now let's look at the answers, and if you get them all right, yay! Congratulations. Okay, so for the first one, we said, I said use the conjunction so. The boys were hungry. They went to the restaurant. Okay, so how would we use this? The boys were hungry, so they went to the restaurant. Restaurant. Did you get it correct? Yay! Good job. All right, next. The boys took the balls. The boys, sorry, the girls took the balls. The boys picked the nets. And I asked you to use the conjunction and. So if you use the conjunction and, you would get the answer. The girls took the balls and the boys picked the net. The nets, sorry. The nets. Okay. Last but not least. You can buy the ice cream. You can buy the cake. So the verb here is the same. So you just write once. And how would we write it? You can buy the ice cream or the cake. See? Two sentences brought together by one conjunction. This is how you write compound sentences. Right. Complex sentences. Complex sentences is a bit difficult. And I don't think we have the time today to go into it. And I think I will meet another session, hopefully. So I'm just going to tell you very um, roughly what is complex sentences. So complex sentences, there are two types of clauses, independent clauses and dependent clauses. Dependent clauses now and they are not For example, just now, another. The boys were hungry for a sentence. They went to the restaurant on a sentence. In the end of the sentence, we have to say that in the problem. Okay? And the complex sentences, one uh, sentence is one sentence. One sentence is one sentence. So, it is a complete idea. Independent clause or main clause is a complete idea and can stand by itself. One sentence. A dependent clause is an incomplete idea, cannot stand by itself. Okay, so we use subordinating conjunctions. More than the coordinating conjunctions, we use the subordinating conjunctions. In the words, we will mention up. So they are complex sentences. Things before, although, oh, sorry, before double ownership. If, unless, because, while. So these are all what we say, subordinating conjunctions that will um, help you write complex sentences but i need to um, i need more time to explain this but i don't think we have enough time for today so i will end i'm going to end the session for now um,
and open the floor for questions from you guys. So, what is that? So, any questions? How can I see the questions? Okay. So, I'm seeing here most of you have a book of a book of writing. Okay, most of you have answered the question and good job guys. So anybody has any other questions? Okay, so most of you are doing well. Most of you have answered all the questions. And this is good. Okay, so... Okay, no questions. Okay, questions you learn and Okay, teacher. Okay, so before I end the session, I just have some things to say. Uh, first of all, um, tomorrow's session will be done by teacher. Teacher Mala, if I'm not mistaken, and she'll be focusing on uh, present con present tense and past tense, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, she's talking about tenses, so please make sure you will join tomorrow. Yes, the teacher will be talking about present continuous tense and past continuous tense. So please join tomorrow's uh, session. Oh, thank you guys. You guys are saying this is good explanation and whatnot yay and uh, before i leave i just want to say those who are not in our inspire classroom in your google uh, classroom you know can you see this um, please join our google classroom Because I am uh, adding classworks over there. So you can join our Google Classroom. And I have been adding all these uh, uh, notes there. Yeah, so you can use the code over there. It's in your screen right now. So just go there, use your Google Classroom ID and log on. And you guys can... Um, assess all the exercises that I have uh, uploaded over there. So that's all I have for today. Oh, thank you, Shavina, Krishna Veni, and Abdul Shakila. So all of you are saying that you guys can understand. Yay, good job. Okay, so that's all for today. Hope you will have a good day and a good week. Take care of yourself. Be safe. and. Um, Practice social distancing. Okay, guys, take care. Bye. I'm gonna leave. Bye.